I'll try to blitz through it because I know we don't have much time. Um, but thanks for everybody that stuck around through the technical difficulties. Um, talking about vector da databases and large language models, I'm Sam Partee. I'm a principal engineer at Redis. Um, and without further ado, we'll get started. Uh, next slide. Yeah. Uh, first, talk about what are vector embeddings, uh, mostly since uh, not everybody knows uh, what a vector database is or even what goes inside them. Uh, vectors are commonly, uh, they commonly represent unstructured data, audio, text, or images. Um, they represent these in a dim highly dimensional uh, embedding. And essentially, I just say this is a list of numbers where each of those numbers represents some piece of information. And these come out of machine learning models, which you've heard all about today, probably from, you know, OpenAI, Hugging Face, Cohere. Um, and it's become incredibly easy to use these and actually extract embeddings from um, these APIs and use them. Um, we'll give an example here of similarity search and how this actually works. Uh, I'm breezing through this, but I actually, with Demetrios and the whole crew at MLOps community, wrote a blog post on this a little bit ago, which includes a lot of this. So um, if you have any more questions about how this kind of search actually works, just let me know uh, and visit that link. Uh, so three semantic vectors, that's our search space here, represented by the three red lines in the plot you see to your right. And then one semantic vector is our query. Um, that is a happy person. You can imagine that any three of these were created by the code on the last screen um, from a hugging face model or an open AI model or what have you. And each of these um, three semantic vectors makes up our vector search space. Um, when we take our query vector that is a happy person, what we're doing is calculating how similar they are. We're trying to find the most similar vector to that query. But how we do that, we just calculate the distance. We say, how far is that vector, that list of numbers that represents the input that we put into that machine learning model, how far is that from any of the other vectors in our vector space? And we do this through a metric called cosine similarity in this case, um, where that actually calculates the cosine distance between any number of those vectors you see represented in the plot there. And so you'll see these numbers down in the bottom right, um, and that is a very happy person, is obviously the most similar sentence to that is a happy person. Um, even though that is and happy and uh, are all words shown in the other sentences, that is a very happy person is the most semantically similar to that is a happy person. Um, and so that is a major advantage of these models is the ability to capture semantic representation, which will become very important later. Next slide, please. So the search space that we were talking about, it can actually be represented inside a database called a vector database. And that's where these vector databases come in, is that you have all of these embeddings that you've created from any number of these APIs or models, and you put them into a vector database, which also provides the ability for a secondary index. Um, and so in this case, you can have an index and all of these embeddings stored in the same place, which allows you to then provide a query interface to applications. So vector databases are essentially a methodology by which you can operationalize the ability of vector similarity search. Um, this makes it easier to deploy and do things like CRUD operations when you go to production and you're actually using these in a real application. Uh, next slide, please. So why am I talking about this? Why is Redis even in this conversation? Uh, because with Redis Search, Redis is a vector database. Um, so when you have both Redis and Redis Search, you have the ability to do secondary indexing on hash or JSON documents stored inside of Redis. Um, we have two index types, flat and hierarchical so navigatable small worlds, um, and a bunch of integrations coming out. You probably heard from Harrison Chase earlier, or if you're going to the MLOS meetup, uh, MLOS meetup in uh, San Francisco later today, You'll hear even more from people like Sebastian um, from Fast API and Harrison and Simba from FeatureForm um, about all of the cool things that uh, you know they're doing in that space. We have integrations there. Um, also, really cool in the Relevance AI that actually allows you to basically have a GUI on top of your vector database. All of these are very important, um, but really one that we're really excited about is our GPU index that's coming out with uh, NVIDIA. So we're working directly with them to be able to actually put your index on GPU. Um, so that's a little bit of why uh, Redis is talking about this and what we've been doing in the field. 
Um, but if you want to try it out, there's an open AI example cookbook that Dr. Run right there will tell you how to spin an instance up um, and try it out yourself. But next slide, please. But we're here to talk about large language models. So what do vector databases have to do with this? Um, and because large was not large enough, this essentially means these large language models are already incredibly encompassing, you know, trained on all of Reddit and all of Wikipedia and all of these various places, but they don't know everything. And especially they don't know everything about um, what you're doing, your confidential information, your proprietary documents, your rapidly updating pieces of information. So we're going to talk about how vector database actually solves that portion of the large language model problem. Next slide, please. So there's three that we'll talk about today, context retrieval, large language model memory, and large language model caching. Um, I'll talk about each of these in the context uh, of various use cases. Um, but essentially, the, the, the hottest one right now is called context retrieval. You see people doing this with like the retrievers in Langchain. The way I like to think about this is uh, the vector database is a golden retriever. And the large language model is essentially uh, a, someone playing fetch. And every time they want to go and get something, the gold retriever goes out and gets it for them. Um, I say this because the operations performed by a vector database are relatively simple and straightforward, just like playing fetch. Um, however, um, the operations performed by a large language model are not. Um, and so that's why I like that analogy, because it specifically supplies the large language model with that particular piece of context that it needs for a particular information and retrieves it for it. Um, so that is also relevant to a lot of different use cases we'll go over, um, but a really interesting one is actually large language model memory. It's similar in the case that it's providing a, con a contextual database outside of the large language model that the large language model may not have been fine tuned on. But in this case, it also provides specific enhancements for things like chatbots, which we'll talk about. And the last one is a simple caching use case, but in this, uh, in this, uh, type of area, you can't just say, is this the same piece of text? Is this query the exact same? Because really, it's not always the exact same words, but they might be the same question. And so you can imagine how vector databases might be used for that. So we'll talk about each of these um, as we go down. So next slide, please. Okay, so Q&A systems are really huge right now um, for all types of use cases. Um, Google Docs really didn't like my bullet points when we uh, translated these, um, but um, you'll see a bunch of different ones, a bunch of different use cases that should have been listed there at the bottom. <laughs> um, but you'll see an architecture here that you can find on GitHub. Uh, Redis Ventures is our GitHub, so there'll be a bunch of different ones in there that you can go out and check out. Um, but here, the venture database is used as an external knowledge base, like I've been talking about. And so when you go and ask a question, what's going to happen is that question is going to be turned into an embedding. And that embedding is going to be used to search through the vector database for semantically similar context. And that context will be retrieved, that golden retriever analogy, for the next stage. You can think of it like a chain. Thanks, Harrison. Um, you can think of it like a chain um, that the next stage will be the generation where that context is going to be used to inform the large language model of something that it may not know about, something that may be proprietary, something that may be confidential, or something you might not want to have put into the fine tuning process. This is also cheaper than fine tuning and faster and allows for real time updates to the knowledge base. Think about you know, you wouldn't want to have something on a millisecond time scale that you needed to fine tune for. Instead, you could have an external database where that context is rapidly updating. Say if you're making trades in the stock market or something, and you really wanted the latest news that you wanted to go put into um, something that suggested what stocks to trade on. I don't know how finance is my thing, but that kind of thing, you would need an external knowledge base that would rapidly update the pace of something like the stock market. Next use case, please. Slide. Thank you. Okay, so long-term <laughs> long memory, I'm gonna blitz through this. Um, we'll just go on to query cap. Uh, one back, one back, if you could. 
So just like I mentioned for chatbots, it's really it's really useful to actually have context. So um, on the previous page, you, you saw how in Q&A system, you might actually have uh, the user ask a question and then the previous chat history be used as the context to answer that question. Well, ChatGPT memory is a really interesting project that uh, allows for uh, addressing topic changes in multiple user sessions and addresses this problem of context length. I know we now have 32K tokens, but not all models have those. And at the same time, even 32K tokens isn't enough in a lot of cases. Um, and this particular methodology allows you to have only the last K messages relevant to a particular message in some chat history isolated for that particular session or use case. Um, so this is a really interesting way to address that problem for a chatbot-like scenario. Highly suggest checking out the project. Next slide, please. And then lastly, this actually, this diagram was taken from uh, the Zillis team. They had just released GPT Cash. Um, it's a really interesting concept. Um, some people have already started implementing this with Redis that we've seen. Um, GPT Cash is a really cool project though. Um, it's, it's essentially where you use a semantic vector database to say, um, if I have a query that is semantically similar enough and I already have cached the answer, to that semantic query, and there's some threshold I have decided upon that I say is okay for that query to be answered in that amount of time, then I can simply say, return that answer. Um, and so what this does is it saves on computational and monetary costs, it speeds up your applications because large language models are slow, and generally it's applicable to almost every single use case that employs a large language model. Um, we've also been working with uh, a, a version of this uh, called the Triton Response Cache um, with NVIDIA, which is soon to be coming out as well. Um, really interesting work in saving on computational costs with caching. Um, so definitely uh, go and check that project out and keep up to date with uh, where we are in uh, that project as well. Um, one last slide. I know it's a lightning talk. I think I'm at way too long given the technical difficulties, but um, if you have any other questions, hit me up at sam.party at redis.com or at samparty on Twitter. Our GitHub and our solutions page for the marketing folks are there. Um, and so if you have any other questions, definitely let me know. There's a ton more to talk about here and we're going to be giving more talks about the year. Um, but thanks to Demetrius and the MLS community folks for having me on. Appreciate it. Thank you so much, Sam. That was awesome. And I appreciate you going at lightning speed. <laughs>